purpose of our achievers and those who may not know, the even of educational excellence was commissioned by Pastor Lorenzo King in 2005. And what was the purpose of this program? His thought then, as he indicated, was to establish a program that would identify, recognize, commend, and celebrate the educational achievement of our youth. In addition to celebrating our young people, the program was intended to serve as an inspirational program. I'm happy to say since 2005, the program has been kept year after year, excepting for 2016 and 17. And the program has honored over 100 students from the district of churches. We find that these students have served in various capacities at various ranks, and some of them are very distinguished members of our society. This year, for the first time, we are honoring and celebrating our GSAT students. Regardless of the level of educational achievement being celebrated, to the CSEC students, to the CAPE students, or to the GSAT students, we have just one word to say to you. We, your church family, we are proud of you. We celebrate with you and we congratulate you. As we go through this evening's program, it is my hope that the younger persons in our congregation, the little ones as it were, will look in, will listen in, will key in, and will seek to gain something from this program. Imagine with me in 2005 when we started, I'm almost sure Romario wasn't born. Am I right or am I right? Am I, that's the point I'm making. But yet a program that was envisioned by our then pastor has lived on that Romario is now here and is being celebrated. That is the power of a program with a vision. And we really want to commend those who have achieved because you are the reason we are here. And so for persons in the congregation who you are not at the front, don't worry. Who knows? It could be next year or the next two years or the next couple of years, right, Cayenne? But whatever number of years it will be, we want to say to all our students who are coming up, listen, look, and learn because this is also for you. Without further ado, let me invite to bring greetings at this time, Pastor Dr. Clifton Knight, Education Director, Central Jamaica Conference of Seventh-day Adventists. Thank you very much. You know, um, I have passed this church over and over and over going and coming but I never know what inside of this church look like when I stepped through the door this afternoon I was pleasantly surprised presently surprised inside here truly took my breath away I never know. Nice inside here. Let's thank the, the musician for um, the nice music uh, that they played. And I don't, I don't watch the hair because my son was also a dreadlock. And when I went to be introduced at a church, my son with his dread was there. And he, along with the rest of the family members, came up and the church welcomed us. So I don't watch the hair. And, and now he has cut it. So he has cut it. So, um, you know, don't watch, don't watch that, brothers and sisters. Just love the young men in the Lord. All right. Senator Dr. Flyde Morris. And Mrs. Morris, Mrs. Sandra Knight, my wife, 
Brothers and sisters, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. Uh, this afternoon I bring you greetings on behalf of the Education Department of Central Jamaica Conference. We join with you to celebrate academic excellence. We honor all of you who have made us proud in passing your GSAT exams and are now in high school and those who have pass their CSEC exams and are at university. Education is the royal road out of poverty. And no matter what anybody tells you, don't believe it. Education is the key to success. And not scamming, and not scheming, and not robbing. But education, as a child I learned this gem, it said labor for learning before you grow old. For learning is better than silver or gold. Silver and gold will vanish away, but a good education will never decay. Dream big and don't let anybody tell you that you cannot make it. If you want it good enough or hard enough, then you can do it. So if you want to be a doctor, if you want to be a lawyer, a dentist, a pilot, a nurse, a teacher, a policeman, then go for it. It is within your grasp Hold on to it. Hold on. You know, this afternoon, I must pause here, that you have the biggest evidence right among us that you can do anything you want to do in the person of Senator Floyd Morris. He lost his sight. And maybe he will tell you about it, but I'm just impressed. He lost his sight when he was a young adult. But that didn't stop him. He went on to get a bachelor's degree, a master's degree, and a PhD. Anybody can do it. And don't let anybody tell you that you cannot do it. So I'm saying to you, make use of the opportunity that has been given to you. Choose wisely your friends. Choose friends that will help you up. Help you to have a positive outlook on life. Don't choose friends who will drag you down in the gutters and hold you there. Don't let peer pressure get the better of you. Keep your eyes on Jesus. Your minds in the books. And be determined to achieve your dream. Think big. Place your hands in God's hands. Lean not, not unto your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him. And he will direct your path. May God bless you. And may you have a good afternoon. In Jesus name. Amen. We want to thank Pastor Dr. Knight for bringing greetings in his capacity. And since, Pastor, it's the first time you are being at Bushy we want to use this opportunity to invite you to come back on a Sabbath and to take the pulpit at the appropriate hour. Surely you have found the place warm. The people are even warmer. Our pastor is behind you. He can make the necessary arrangements and our church clerks can stand by for the contact numbers. When I saw Pastor Knight this afternoon, I had to check my clock. So I said to somebody, perhaps my clock stopped working because it was after two. And we got it to our friends because I, I started to check. I said, no man, maybe it's after three, but you know the battery and these things fail. 
I don't know if it's your trait, but it was certainly very impressive to have had you here at this time of the day. And I thank you for coming so early. He was the first person. Could you put your hands together for him? And thank you for bringing greetings. With such an introduction, then you will understand what I went through to be here. But Bushy Park is very special to us in the Central Jamaica Conference. In fact, over the years, we have had good partnership and collaboration. As you all know, the servant of the Lord says that we ought to prepare our young people not only to give service in this life, but as they give service in this life, we ought to prepare them to ensure that they give service above. This is what true education is all about. So I want to commend the pastor, the team, the organizers, all those persons who have put together this initiative. I understand this might be your sixth initiative or sixth year that you're having this kind of celebration and appreciation. Other churches have, uh, well, I should say, captured this initiative. And it is commendable, amen? amen. Anything we do in the Seventh-day Adventist Church, there is no cop copyright on it, amen? There's no copyright on it, it's open. So you started a good thing here. Other churches have uh, seen it. They have captured it and they have reached their target goals. I understand you have been in this now for over for 2000 from 2005. Amen. Yes. Commendable. I also want to uh, welcome and acknowledge my my friend the Senator the Honorable Floyd Morris and his, his dear wife. I am so happy to be in the, in the company of you two individuals. And I just hope that the church in the Central Jamaica Conference will continue to respect its youth and whatever we can do to ensure that they stay in the church. Come on and say amen. We want our young people to stay in the church. We want our young people to know that we respect and we appreciate them. So hats off, Bushy Park, and may God continue to bless you. Could you put our hands together for him, please? Or say amen. And Pastor Johnson, just to let you know, you're not going to leave until you have done some business with us. And I'll tell you what that business is, is in a moment. While he greets, we want to invite Elder Wallace to... Bless us as he's done so many times before with his musical gift. I invite you to be refreshed and to be inspired as we lift our praises to the Lord. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon, everyone. Okay, because you are all in God's house and we are to praise God. God has been good to us in so many ways that our offspring are holding close to him because he is the divine God that set above us to guide our children. And once they are able to surround themselves to God, he is able to use them in a mighty way. One day a plain village woman Driven by love for the Lord Recklessly poured out a valuable essence Disregarding the soul 
and one it was broken and spilled out a fragrance filled all the room like a prisoner released from a shackle like a spirit free from the tomb broken and filled out just the love of you Jesus God oh precious treasure Lavish on me Broken and sealed out And poured at your feet In sweet abandon Lord, you and used up for thee. Oh, your God, precious treasure, His love and His own precious Son. Spend here to show love of a father just for love it was done and though your breath is and holy to give up yourself willingly you will not number 12 as already mentioned forgive me if I feel like celebrating forgive me if I feel like shouting and jumping but God has been good when I stop to think and I mentioned already that when we began 12 years ago many of our achievers they were not yet here in the world only God could have done such a wonderful thing and why do we celebrate our young people recognize that there is a war for their soul. There is no middle ground. 
if we don't love them and affirm them and celebrate them and big them up, someone else will. Some other influence will. Some other source will. A voice will speak. I think it ought to be the voice of the Lord. And so we celebrate. We give God thanks. We rejoice. We're happy. We're excited for these precious young people and God's goodness in their lives. When we started 12 years ago, some of them perhaps were maybe five or six or even four. Think of Kira Gabidon. Everybody know Kira? Yeah. Kira is one of those little ones that, you know, you know, just born the other day. Just the other day, up and down and up and down. And this evening, it's not just Kira, it's Mr. Gabidon. Yeah. Mr. Gabidon attained nine subjects from the Glenmuir High School. He will share with us this evening his experience. Do allow me to ask to stand. Mama, Grandma, who is a mother to so many of us. Sister Gabby, where are you? Wave your hand. Shout and smile. Praise the Lord. And I don't know all of the business, but I hear that there was a day that Kira just got around to Grandma's house and said, Grandma, may I move in now, you know? And yes, may I stay? What a grandma that must be. But mom is also here. And Sister Judith is one of those, could you stand? She is decked in that royal color and one of my favorite colors. She's not wearing anything for the honorable center, but it's a good thing that um, he's not into those things on the Sabbath today. But she's looking so beautiful in her purple and green. Congratulations. You must be proud. You have done well. And as a church, we ought to feel proud because Kira is another Bushy Park baby. And we don't know where five years from now he will be. Let me not take up any more of this young man's time. I invite brother, Mr. Elder to be Kira Gabidon to share with us his account, his journey, as we continue to celebrate our 12th season of education excellence. Our theme for this evening remains educational excellence amidst the odds and without compromise. Kiro, what says you? Good evening, everyone. Okay, so once again, my name is Kira Gabadon, a past student of the Glenmore High School. So, um, I think nine ones includes, um, not nine ones, four ones and five twos, making the nine. No attending um, the University of Technology, mastering in computing and working for this company called um, Loan Series um, through SAPNA, which is an initiative so we develop software for that company and for other companies such as like NCB and so forth. Um, my first experience, wow. Show up and all, those are, all of those who are doing um, CSEC for this coming year. I'm not afraid to put up on the hand, put up on the hand. Okay. If you want the ones, you have a lot of work to do. Trust me. Sleepless nights. Mm. <laughs> remember the nights when, I remember this particular night when I had this. Well, you guys are now fortunate that you have to do SBAs for all the subjects. Advice, see if you can get the 100 in them. It's very beneficial. Amen. So I remember this. So for my year, we were the first year to do a math SBA. You didn't have any sample you can say. You, know, you can look for and get an idea. I come from scratch. So and another thing to group work. Oh my goodness. 
placing this group of individuals, them don't do nothing. So I was in that situation. So I remember this particular night, <laughs> I had my math teacher, oh, no. Pretend to SBAs, it's best that you not to friend of the teachers, but develop a good relationship with the teachers because they are very beneficial as well. So um, I had this math teacher, she was new. She decided to help us, us. <laughs> I was the only one on the line to help. So she helped me and I had to stay up the entire night and did that by myself. <sighs> that was something. I remember when I was, I think it was like three o'clock in the morning, still awake working on the project myself. Grandpa walking, you're not gonna you bet it. <laughs> no. So I literally the following day I had to go to school for half day because I'm tired. Trust me, it's not easy. To be honest. Yeah, but the reward is great. Recommendations. Um does everyone know the um CXC study guide? No one? get the study guide that's been advertising all the time those books are what i use to study literally didn't really bother to look in the notebooks because some teachers just yeah so the, those are the books i used to study so i guess you can use that as well and make sure that you go through it thoroughly Please, the next thing, pay attention in class. Trust me, because that was one of my downfalls. Trust me. And do your homework. So the scenario was, um, I think it was Akon's class, and I was really, really tired because of the SBs, and I fell asleep in that class, that particular class. And every class after that, I don't understand what is going on. Because I missed out on the basic concepts that was being taught in that previous class. So that was a really, really big problem. And please, as much as possible, start studying. Just please start studying. I made the mistake of further accounts class because I didn't really know anything. And I studied the day before the exam. But I got the tool, though. Thank God. <laughs> yes, and basically that's it. But it's been a really really rough journey so i implore you all who are going to do your cxc's to study hard start from now please and thank you yes thank you thank you and again congratulations on my program i have horatio spencer spence <clears throat> He got 10 subjects. But when we were making up the program, we weren't sure who he was. So we just want to acknowledge Sir Horatia Spence, who obtained 10 subjects. And we want to say congratulations. He's now at the Northern Caribbean University, and he's a part of Pastor's family's pastor's second son or third child. Congratulations to you as well. Oh, I uh, don't want you to say something. Even so you're from Mulladin High School, but I'm a popular demand, and I, I can't disobey the first elder because you know, my membership is at stake here. Mm. So please come. I wouldn't want to have to be looking at a new church from Sabbath, you know. So please, greet us as, as a pastor's son in Jesus, okay? But brief. Uh, yeah, good afternoon. Um, Basically, I just work hard and give God the glory all the way. Thank you. Our appreciation, this token for appreciation to the family of the Barretts. We understand and we know how deep it is, but God understands more. So we hope and pray this afternoon that as we present this token to you, to assist you, 
in the advancement of our school project. Alrighty, and we're going to do a little total. And I as a steward of the people, I'll come back and give a report. And if I'm not satisfied, I'm going to lock the door and keep us in here tonight until I've gotten that which I think we need to get. While I'm making that arrangement to lock us in, I invite Sister Elder Trisha Cameron Anglin to come forward and she will do for us our introduction as we continue to enjoy the instrumental display. Thanks to those who gave. I'm not ungrateful, demanding, but not ungrateful. So thanks for those who gave. And the Lord will bless you. I'm not praying for your more children, but I'm praying for your long life that when I come back, you can give again. Thank you, Elder Sterling Richards. And as I stand here, we just got a pledge for $60,000, 20 from three gentlemen in the congregation by the name of Anglin Stewart, they go by these names, and Johnson. So, 20,000 each they have pledged. So we need to speak to Sister Andrea, our capable um, security minister for finance. She will, you know she's a security minister for finance. I hope you have a receipt to give her because she made it clear. And we don't want them to read it out because of $7,500. Okay, she will um, collect the money the on our behalf and we will give record as how to be used and let us establish it for the young lady. Sister Barrett, because I know when you guys come to vote, you, your hands get into all sorts of mischief. But I'm making it clear, this is for Sister Barrett. That's your understanding? Sister Lawyer. Okay, Sister Lawyer. Brothers and sisters, a pleasant evening to you all. Let me try that again because maybe I didn't give you my warmest greeting, which is why I was not well received. So let me say, brothers and sisters, Good evening in the name of the Lord. Let me extend a warm and cordial welcome to our president, our beloved president for the Central Jamaica Conference, who is here with us this afternoon, to our board of elders, to our members, and also to our guest speaker, the speaker who I have the distinguished pleasure and privilege of introducing to you this afternoon. I speak of... Floyd Morris, and I have not attached the post nominals because I want you to understand the man of whom I speak. It is said that perfection is an unattainable goal, but it is striving for it which makes us achieve greater levels of excellence. This statement is true and reflective of the life of Floyd Morris. Floyd Morris was born in Baileysville, St. Mary. And he was born to Jamita Price and his father is Lloyd Morris. Floyd Morris attended the Port Maria Primary School and after passing the common entrance examination in 1981, he went to St. Mary High School. And whilst at St. Mary High School, he developed glaucoma in 1983 at the age of 14. And this unfortunate illness was what led to his blindness in 1989 at the age of 20. The illness contributed to him graduating from St. Mary High School in 1986 without a single academic subject. But like a true soldier, in the army of God, Floyd Morris decided that he had to press on. Can I get an amen? amen? So in 1991, after two years of trauma and stress, he decided that he was going to reclaim his life. This he did by seeking assistance from the Jamaica Society for the Blind, where he went and received rehabilitation. He learned to read and write Braille, and this equipped him with the tools to restart his education. 
He attended the Michael Evening College where he did his O and A level subjects. And having successfully passed seven subjects within two years, Floyd Morris moved on to the University of the West Indies, Mona Campus, to pursue a Bachelor of Arts in Mass Communications. Morris completed this course of study in 1996. Upon completing the degree in Mass Communications, Morris pursued a Master of Philosophy in Government at the same institution. This he completed in 2001. Whilst at the University of the West Indies Mona, Morris received several scholarships and awards. These included Workers' Bank Scholarship for a Student with Disability, Circle K International Scholarship, UWI Postgraduate Scholarship, and the Sir Frank Worrell Scholarship. Floyd Morris was called to national duties in 1998 when he became the first blind person to be appointed to the Senate of Jamaica. He amen, church? Yeah. Maybe I should amend that and say, Floyd Morris, a Seventh-day Adventist, was called to national duties in 1998 when he became the first blind person to be appointed to the Senate in Jamaica. Yeah. He distinguished himself and was appointed a Minister of State in 2001, where he served in the capacity for six years. He was assigned to the Ministry of Labor and Social Security, where he had special responsibilities for the program of advancement through health and education. Can I get an amen for PAP? The National Insurance Scheme, NIS, and persons with dis disabilities and senior citizens. Floyd Morris was reappointed to the Parliament of Jamaica in 2012 to serve as a government senator and was promoted to the position of president of the Senate in May 2013. The first person with a disability to occupy this high office in Jamaica. He was reappointed as an opposition senator in 2016. Floyd Morris recently successfully completed his Doctor of Philosophy, PhD, in government at the University of the West Indies, Mona Campus, and is the director of the U.S. Center for Disability Studies. He is also the author of the book, By Faith, Not By Sight, that chronicles his life experiences and is a must read for all. He is the host of the radio show, Seeing from a Different Perspective, which is aired on Newstalk 93FM on Mondays from 12 p.m. to 2.30 p.m. He is a 2012 recipient of the Prime Minister's Lifetime Award for Excellence in Disability Reform in 2017, in the 2017 Jamaica Gleaner Education, Education Personality of the Year. He is an internationally recognized speaker, yes. delivering speeches all over the world, including the United Nations and the General Conference of the Seventh-day Adventist Church in San Antonio, Texas, where he addressed a direct audience of over 70,000 individuals. Floyd Morris is a devout Christian yes. and a member of the Seventh-day Adventist Church. He is married to the vivacious and lovely Shelly Ann. He is the 2011, which you didn't know, Domino Champion. Domino Champion for his home church, Andrews Memorial Seventh-day Adventist Church. His motto is, it's nice to be nice. What's his motto? It's nice to be nice. Ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, I present to you, boys and girls, Senator Dr. Floyd Morris. Amen, church. Why is she extra? 
But let me tell you something. Me know where it come from. She's a Taylorite. So, forgive her. Pastor Levi Johnson, my parishioner and friend. Dr. Knight, educational director for Central Jamaica Conference and his wife. Pastor Harris, pastor of the church, members of the board of elders, members of the Bushy Park SDA church and visiting churches. My dear wife, Shelly Ann, brothers and sisters of the faith, a pleasant good afternoon to you all. Indeed, it's a signal honor to be back here at Bushy Park SDA. And I say be back here because 20 odd years ago, I had visited Bushy Park with Advent Fellowship. Those were the days when we were actively involved with Advent Fellowship on the campus. And we used to go around to different churches and putting on AY programs. So it's not my first visit to Bushy Park SDA, but it's the first to speak from your pulpit. I was very happy to accept the invitation when Sister Keisha extended the invitation. And let me tell you something. If you want to get Floyd Morris to come and speak at your function, yes. you just need to find somebody who was at Advent Fellowship or at Taylor Hall that have some form of connection. Because when they call, it is difficult to say no. And so I unhesitatingly responded to the call. And especially within the context of what the invitation was about. An invitation to speak at an appreciator appreciation event for students who have excelled in the field of education. And those who know me well understand very much that once you touch education, you touch my heart. I must tell you, I have been engaged Pastor Johnson, Pastor Knight, in an intense social media debate over the past couple of weeks about whether or not we should allow students to go to school to focus on sports. And I say to them, absolutely not. We send our children to school to learn. Yes. Sports is secondary. Yes. And yes, sports can help educationally. Yes. But the fundamental reason why we send our children to school is to get an education. Yes. And I make absolutely no apologies for my stance because the fact is that anything can happen to an individual whilst they are pursuing their sporting career. Injuries can happen. And there goes the end of the career of the individual. What will happen to that individual thereafter? So we must understand what our priorities are and I encourage every youth if they are good at sports to participate in sports but make sure that your focus in school 
is on your education. And so, I am heartened to be here and to speak to your theme, educational excellence amidst the odds and without compromise. It is a theme that is appropriately fitting and fittingly appropriate for the occasion. Because today we are celebrating excellence. Yes. And no doubt these youngsters would have gone through many challenges. They would have gone through many struggles. But in spite of the challenges, they are still here giving thanks and giving praise to God. Yes. They have not compromised. And I want to say and to suggest to you that in order for you to achieve educational excellence, there are three things that I believe is fundamental to any individual achieving educational excellence. One, you must have a vision. Two, strong parental support. And three, a firm belief in God. And I must say, Pastor Knight, that when I go to events and I speak and I say to people that, you must have a vision. Yes. Oh, yes. Some individuals laugh because they say, how is it that you as a blind man coming to tell us that you must have a vision? But the thing is that, Pastor Johnson, there is a fundamental difference yes. between sight yes. and vision. Yes. Because having a vision speaks to You having a clear sense of indication as to what it is that you want to be and what you want to become in life. Yes, yes, yes. Having sight speaks to the physical ability to see. Yes. So I am here standing before you students today not being able to see you how you look beautiful and gorgeous but I have a clear sense of vision as to where I want to go and who I want to be and I want to challenge you today that you must have a clear sense of vision because when you have a clear sense of vision you won't be tossed by any wind or any doctrine that comes your way you will stand firm amidst the storms that will blow your way. So have a clear sense of vision. And then, when you have a clear sense of vision, you need to have parents who are around consistently to give you support, to help you along the way, to help in guiding and ensuring that you don't stray from that vision. And I want to say to the parents that are here that you have a duty and you are obligated yes. to giving support to your children. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. It is not only for you to come out at events like this and big up your chest yes. and say, boy, is my boy that yes. or my girl that. Yes. You must be there for them all the time yes. Oh, yes. 
Because if you take fast and carry them into this world. Yes. So you have a duty yes. to make sure yes, that you give them the requisite support yes, for them to be successful. Yes. And when you give them the support yes. and then they are successful, you can take all the glory and you can take all the praise. But equally, I want to suggest to you, students, that you can have all the vision in the world. You can have all the parental support in the world. But if you don't have God at the center of your life, excellence that you aspire for, will not be accomplished. I want to suggest to you that if you place God at the center of your life, let him be the man that guide you along life's journey. Once he is that man that you place at the center, academic excellence is guaranteed. I am here today as a witness. I am here as a testimony. Because you see, I came from humble family background. My mother, a dressmaker. My father, a fireman who migrated and lived me solely in my mother's care. In Baileysville, St. Mary. I was born with my sight. Went past common entrance. Went to St. Mary High School. Developed glaucoma whilst I was in third form. Went through the system and graduated in 1986 without a single academic subject. I remember... Pastor Johnson, when I was sitting my exams and I sat there just waiting for the moment to pass because I put the paper up to my face. I couldn't see anything to write. And I graduated without a single subject. I was left at home just waiting for the dreaded moment to come because the doctors had diagnosed and said that it is not a matter of if, it is a matter of when blindness will come. And so I was there waiting for that dreaded moment and blindness did came in 1989 when I lost my total sight at age 20. And it was a struggle. It was a stressful moment because I knew not what the future was going to be. I did not understand what God had in store for me. But I tell you, I decided that I was not going to give up. I was going to soldier on in spite of the odds, in spite of the challenges. But in order for me to do so, I had to center myself. You see, I'm going through some rigorous exercise programs and my physio physiotherapist, she said to me, said, listen to me, when you get off track, you must make sure that you center yourself. And so blindness might have hit me off track, but I had to center myself. And in order for me to center myself, I had to find the giver of life. I had to find the one who blew breath in man I had to find that one who had the power to heal and protect. 
I had to find Jesus. And I surrendered my life to Christ Jesus at the church that Pastor Johnson is familiar with in Port Maria, SDA Church. And I became a member of the Adventist Church in 1991. And since then, I have been walking with Christ Jesus to this day. And let me tell you something, young people. God is not slack concerning his promises. Because when he says he will not leave you, nor forsake you, understand that there is one thing that, that God cannot do, and that is to lie. And so when he says he will not leave you or forsake you, his promises are true. And then... In Malachi, he says to you that when you are faithful to him, he will open up the windows of heaven. And Pastor Knight, I wondered what it is that God is talking about when he says windows. Because windows are smaller than doors. So I thought that God would say, I will open up the doors of heaven. But God is much smarter than man. Because he knows that in any building, there are more windows than doors. And so when he says, I will open up the windows of heaven for you, he knows what he's talking about. And he will open up the windows of heaven and pour out the blessing so that you will not have room enough to receive it. Understand this. That God has been opening up the windows in my life. He caused me to leave St. Mary. In 1991, come to Kingston. Got rehabilitated at the Jamaica Society for the Blind. And in five months, completed Reading and writing braille course. Yes. Then I went to my co-evening college. Yes. And in two years, I completed seven subjects. Yes. Including two A-levels and three distinctions at the GCE O-level. He opened up the windows of heaven. And caused me to go to the University of the West Indies. Without a single cent in my name. But whilst I was at the University of the West Indies, I come, my blind son. This is what I'm going to do for you. And in the first year, he provided me with a scholarship, the Workers' Bank Scholarship for a student with a disability. Then the Circle K International Scholarship. After I completed the first degree, went on to do the master's degree, he provided more scholarships for me. A postgraduate scholarship. And the Circle K, Sir, the Sir Frank Worrell Scholarship for a student that have excelled at the postgraduate level. I graduated in 2001 with a Master of Philosophy degree. And because of my contribution and my successes in academics, then Prime Minister Patterson appointed me in the Senate. Yes, and in 2001, God touched him yes. and opened up the windows of heaven. Yes. And I was appointed as the first blind person to serve in the executive arm of government in Jamaica. Yes. That position I served until 2007. And in 2013, again, yes. God touched the then prime minister and caused me to be promoted to the president of the Senate of Jamaica. Yes. Young people, when you are faithful to God, yes. he will be faithful to you. Yes. And let me tell you something. God wasn't finished with me yet. Because in 2017, 36 years, after I first went to St. Mary High School, 
And 31 years after I graduated from that institution without a single academic subject, I graduated from the University of the West Indies with a PhD in government with special focus on political communication. Young people, God is able. God is able. And so once you put your faith and your trust in him, he will provide the way. He will turn obstacles into opportunities. You know, when I got blind, and I'm coming down, when I got blind, I was very worried. Elder Cameron Anglin, as to what my future was going to be. Because in Jamaica, being blind and poor is a death sentence. And I was very concerned as to what was going to happen to me. And I want to tell you, church, that there are three things that a blind man is concerned about in this life. How is he going to survive? Where is he going to get resources from to survive? And thankfully God has been faithful to me. And he has created many opportunities. Then a blind man is also concerned about... What is going to eat? Yes. What you're putting before me to eat? Yes. You can imagine yes. a blind man yes. who is an Adventist yes. go out there in the public to eat yes. and then sneak in a little piece of pork or a piece of shrimp in our plate. And I thank God because. I don't eat the eat it. And when I go out to any function, my wife or my driver have to inspect the plate. And when I go to an Adventist function, I can't eat all I want. But then, a blind man is also concerned about who is going to if he's going to find a life partner. If he's going to find a life partner. Because the truth is that a lot of people tend to skin up them face and them nose on persons who have disabilities. But they don't understand the capacity of persons with disabilities and to do to do so is to find a good man who has a disability and let me tell you something god has been faithful to me because he has opened up my eyes so that i could look in the mighty central jamaica conference and find a beautiful damsel from Mapen SDA in the person of Sister Shelley and Gail. And I'm certain that you can testify that she look beautiful for true. Young people understand this. That when you put your faith and trust in God, he's going to provide for you. So now is not the time for you to be running down the things of the world. Because when you invest in education, and when you put your faith and your trust in God, he is going to create that pathway for you. And him said that when you put your faith and trust in him, 
is going to cause you to ride upon the high places of the earth. And I'm going to announce this for the first time in Jamaica. I hope that I don't get myself in trouble. But if the media is here, it is not for earplay until after Monday. Because in very short order, yes. CARICOM yes. will be announcing yes. that yours truly yes. is the disability rapporteur for the entire Caribbean region. Yes. And understand what will happen to you young people when you put your faith and trust in God, yes. He will provide you with opportunities that you never dream of. Yes. I say to you, make sure that you stay focused. Yes. Make sure that you stay grounded. Yes. Put your faith and trust in God and invest in education. Yes. There are going to be mountains in your way. But those mountains can be climbed. You're going to encounter oceans in your way. But those oceans can be climbed. You are going to encounter rivers in your way. But those rivers can be crossed. You are going to find Goliaths in your way. But I tell you that those Goliaths can be slain. Because as sons and daughters of the king. We are as mighty as King David. God bless you. And I wish you all the best. As you aspire for educational excellence. And as I take my seat, as I take my seat, I too want to join with the three distinguished gentlemen who have made the pledge for $20,000 and add another $20,000 to that so that the young lady can get an education. God bless you. God be with you. Floyd Morris, on behalf of the Achievers and the Church, we present you this token for teaching us on education and how to center ourselves. We thank you for coming, and once again, we say thank you. to put our hands together for the Honorable Senator Floyd Morris. Indeed, we have been challenged. Indeed, we have been charged. I need not say another word. But on the financial matter, before I get into the financial matter, Pastor Johnson, Brother Floyd, we can do it at the back in our VIP section where you'd have paid your due. So, Brother Floyd has registered for the boot. Brother Stewart, Brother Anglin, and Brother Johnson. It's, it's twenty thousand dollars. Um, is the entry fee right, lawyer? Right. So, Pastor, we accept checks, right? And we will take the check on Monday. And we have witnesses. Monday, we have witnesses. Oh, my, so marginal me, not the church, marginal me. Tuesday. All right then. For those who have joined us belatedly. Let me extend warmest welcome to Pastor Damien Chambers. Could you stand, Pastor? He came in late. He is the Central Jamaica Conference Communication Director, and we appreciate his presence along with his team. Could you put our hands together for them? They have been here. We are already acknowledge our pastor, President Levi Johnson. We also have joining us Pastor Williams from the no, 10 City and Newlands Church. Pastor, could you stand so they can see you and make you welcome? You came late, but the rule is the same. We have a VIP lounge. It's only $20,000 for the access fee. And we wouldn't want to leave you out. You have a friend with you. I'll let him pay 10 and you pay 10. So you both can come in together. Welcome, friend. I don't know your name, but welcome. 
for the update we have received seven thousand five hundred dollars could you put your hands together for me and for those who joined us late we established today a fund for a very precious promising young lady whose father was brutally murdered just out at Grove earlier on this year and as a church family we are putting together a purse for her exclusively that means only fear nobody else sister Gibson about to look for and tell about the children they may not fall feet mm -mm 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 -mm. only for this young miss nobody let me turn my back I don't even want to see you I make up my mind this is just for sister Barrett my goal this evening is a hundred thousand dollars we have received twenty thousand from the senator, 20,000 from Dr. Anglin, 20,000 from Elder Stewart, 20,000 from Elder Johnson. I have 7,500 from change. Who will give me that closing money? We will not leave here. The refreshment is on the outside. It will not be served until we have met our 100,000. Is that the conference will give me the rest of the money? Is that what you're saying? Is that what you're saying, brethren? All in favor, say aye. That's right. I won't ask if anybody opposed. Carry. Next item on the agenda. Without further ado, I want to invite at this time Sister Mrs. Hilton and Andrew Reed. They will do our roll call. I also want to invite Pastor Johnson, Pastor Harris, Pastor Knight, and Pastor Williams to come and to just join us at this side as we shake hands and greet and present the tokens. Ladies, not ladies, Hilton and Reed, could you come forward as we make the presentation to our achievers for 2018? If you are here from Church Pen, if you are here from Macook or Springbridge and you have achievers with you, please indicate clearly so you can be included at this time. Inviting our president, tall, dark, and handsome, the one and only Levi Augustus Johnson, to lead the parade for us of the greeters. Elder Dr. Knight will join him. Pastor Harris will stand beside, and our visiting pastors will also join. And they will greet and say all those nice bunununo sting. Remember, achievers, the camera is on. Put on that perfect smile. This is your moment. Shine and enjoy the evening. Ladies, take us through the roll call. Good evening, everyone. Good evening, I'll, church. I'll be going through the achievers. The GSET achievers and those who are in fourth form who did CXC and excelled. So I'm going to start with the GSET students first. We have Judine Hines, who attended the Spring Gardens Primary School and is now a student of the St. Catherine High School. They are getting the certificates. Judine Hines. that Judine was a top achiever for her school. Next, we have Rihanna McCleary. She was a student of the Marleymount Primary and now attends the Queens High School. And let me make mention also that she is a past student of the Bushy Park SDA Learning Center. And also, that we were extremely proud and we heard a 96% average. Yeah. Next we have
have Mikhail Taylor, who attended the St. Catherine Primary High, and now, at, sorry, St. Catherine Primary School, and now attends Spanish Town High. And also, I have the principal beside me who is nudging me, I'm gonna ask her to stop. I'm going to mention that he is also a past student of the Bushy Park SDA Learning Center. Foundation is important. Next, we have Romario Reed, who attended the Willardine Prep School and now goes to the San Diego High School. I know she's been modest. Romario is her son. He also received a scholarship from the Willardine High School but he chose otherwise, and she's the proud mom of Romario. And he is also a past student of the Bush Park SDA Learning Center. Thank you. Alien Richards. Alien Richards attended the Willardine Prep School and is now attending the San Diego High School. Alien was also recipient of a scholarship from the Willardine High School, Willardine Prep. We have Jador Sims, but he's absent. He's not here now. So that's all the students. The GSAT students, congratulations. Now we'll go on to those students who have not reached fifth form but they did CXC subjects and were successful. We have Ruel Stewart. Yes. Got a two, I understand. Congratulations. And we have we have Deidre Rodney. did social studies and was successful. There are two other persons, but they're not here. Chloe Caballero and Abigail Lloyd. They too were successful. Is there anyone who wants to collect on behalf of Chloe Caballero? Any of the Caballeros are here? No? Anybody wants to collect on behalf of Abigail Lloyd? Elder Richard Stewart will do the same. Please convey our congrats to Abigail, Elder Richard Stewart. On the list is Angela Lloyd. Brother Richard, I guess we will have to do the honors again. And Angela Lloyd, and she has 8K and 9C sec. And she is now attending the University of the West Indies. Philip Lloyd also. Philip is at the University of the West Indies also. 10, 6, C, and 9, Cape. Oh, 
So Philip is a past student from the Glenmuir. Let me not be biased with the San Diego High School. <laughs> Next is Chevella Henry with eight C-sex subject. She's not here. Is there anyone here who can collect on her behalf? No, we'll move on. Horatia Spez. 10 C-sex subject. He's coming from the Villa Dean High School and he's now attending Northern Caribbean University. Then, Kiro Gabidon, that's my nephew. <laughs> Nine C sex subjects. Glenmuir High School, coming from Glenmuir, and he is now at UTEC. Then we have Shade Taylor. Shade Taylor. Eight C sec and three K. So Shade is from the community. We're not just community for from our church, but she's a community member and her mother is a newly baptized member of the church. I'm gonna ask her mother to stand. And the past student and of the Bush Park SDA Learning Center. Her mother is here. Mother, can you remove the, the camera from your face, miss? Congratulations. And, guys. and then we have Tavia Miller with four C sex subjects. Tavia is currently doing upper six at Old Harbor Primary. Old Harbor High, sorry. Tavia is absent, but is there anyone who wants to collect on her behalf? Grandmother is coming. And that completes the list for this afternoon. Ladies and gentlemen. No, I'm sorry, I miss Nicardo. Oh my Lord. How could you? <laughs> Nicardo Bramwell, five C six subjects. And he's one of our past students also. Okay, that's the list. Past student of the Old Harbor High School. Okay, thank you very much. I just wanted to give a big round of applause to our achievers. I'm going to ask them to stand. All our achievers, please stand and face the congregation. And I wanted to give them a big round of applause. And I want the ones that are coming up like Javin to be encouraged so that next year we know we'll be handing Javin his certificate or his trophy and all the others coming up. Congratulations. Understand that there is a okay. Understand that Vaughn Bonner he resides in Brazil. He did he got a degree in linguistics. And I'm gonna ask somebody to come and collect on his behalf. Somebody from the Knights family, can you please come up and collect on behalf of Vaughn Bonner?
convey our heartiest congratulations to Vaughn. Thank you. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. And again, congratulations to our achievers. Joining us just now is our caretaker, Mr. Kippy Mears. But you see, he's missed the rules. So let me bring you up to scratch. We have a VIP lounge around there for our honored guest speaker and his honored guests, to which you're welcome. There's just a minimal fee. Given the hour that you have arrived, we will give him a discount. What, Senator? No, oh, oh, oh dear. No, I'm sorry. No. They're saying no. So let me tell you what happened. This evening we launched a scholarship for a young lady from our congregation. Her father was unfortunately murdered just saw Grove earlier on this year and he was a truly tremendous dad. We have gotten some pledges which we know will be honored. Senator Moy Morris has pledged um, 20,000. Brother Anglin, Brother Johnson, and Brother Stuart each pledged 20,000. Now we know you will not operate at that low level because we understand that you're a man poised for great things. And so without putting you on the spot, we will take 25,000 to wrap it up, right? We accept checks, NCB, Sajiko Weir is, is up and coming, and we will still work with BNS. We are not particular. We do have credit facilities, credit card, debit card. We can make arrangement at Kennedy's Pharmacy, and we can pass the funds on. So we have all the facilities in place. Our, in fact, in fact, you may think I'm joking, our honorable security financial advisors right beside you, and I didn't put you there. And so she will ensure that $25,000 is offered before you can be refreshed. But we welcome you to the refreshment table. Please come and bring greetings, even as you tell her your contact number and where to find you to collect the $25,000. Oh, they don't know where to find you. It seems you, are, you have been committed. Ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, help me make welcome Brother Mir. And he will not be leaving us before we will have our vote of thanks and our Vespers note and a final song from Brother Wallace. So immediately after Mr. Mir speak, we will invite Brother Wallace to sing. Then we'll invite the one and only, tall, dark, and handsome, Levi Jones, to give us a brief Vesper note. And then Dr. Patrick Anglin will give us the closing Thank you. We will take these order, items this order. Thanks. Can I get a hug? Sure. You're just marvelous. Oh, the Lord be praised. We're going to double it. <laughs> Audience, I don't know what to say. I just, I'm going to keep my mouth shut. You heard that? One hug and it almost double. But I'll see what I can do. Sorry, sorry. Very sorry to be late, but duty called and I had to answer. Coming from two funerals, and then I was in Island Farm, um, neighbors here. I don't know how many of you saw the news of this little boy who, because his mother is a single mother with three children, he just, has just passed for Inswood High, because of the Zozo, the job that his mother used to do in the evenings that has cut because she's a bartender, so she's not able to earn what she used to earn, that little boy thought of buying with his lunch money six chickens and some feed to raise to help his mother to send him to school. I had to visit them because beauty calls. It was an experience around there. I am so glad to know that many um, Jamaicans had seen the news and from their heart was calling the mother, offering to build a chicken coop to help out with the house. Groceries were brought around there today, and she's feeling real good. She has a different job now, outside of the Zozo area, so I think she'll be able 
to send her children to school. He attends Inzwood High, and the other two, his little sister and smaller brother, attend Spring Village um, Primary. So I had to be there, and I feel real good. Just bring me to what we are here about now. In inviting and encouraging excellence from our young ones. I feel real good too, and I want to applaud this institution for at least highlighting and encouraging more. I always believe that one of the main problems we have in Jamaica is a social problem. And we have to fix it from the homes, from the communities, and then when I become a part of government, the job will be easier for me. But I must applaud again, and I'm here to share and partake. I don't know what else my duties are, but I had to rush come, just got a bite and come here. But education is very important. It doesn't only happen in the classroom. It happens from in the home. And when I went around to Island Farm, the discipline and how the two, the children, behaved in terms of speaking to us, being around us, we can, I, I, I understand that that single mother is educating her children from home. I, in particular, when it comes to education, I'm very proud, and I always have to boast about my party, and I have to praise my party leader, because when I hear a uh, uh, he has, been made, he has made a covenant to the people of Jamaica to, when we become government, to make sure the first person qualified for a tertiary institution will go through that institution with all the bills paid, all the fees paid. I feel real good and I feel like Jamaica will be going somewhere if those things are um, put in place. Again, I don't want to take up the time because everybody is here to hear our senator. Oh. Wow. I am really late. Wow. <laughs> but anyway, I'm glad to be here, glad to share, glad to see what is happening in my own community. Um, on Thursday, I was here just at a meeting of the CDC, right on those benches there. And things are happening. We just want people to come together, be the Jamaicans that we ha are, and we will make Jamaica what it should be. Thank you for listening to me. I feel good being here. And let us um, praise those children. Let us encourage those children. And they will come to make us proud. Thank you very much. To hold a newborn baby and feel the pride and joy it gives. But greater still. The calm assurance We must face On certain days Because he lives Because he lives I can face Living J.
just because he lives. And then one day I'll cross that old river. I'll fight life's final, life's final war with pain. And then after this way to victory, I feel like a glory. says the fellowship here with my Lord can be so inexpressible sweet what will it be when his face we'll see when round the white throne we'll meet brothers and sisters ladies and gentlemen I think this has been the place to be I think this might be the best place, this side of the vineyard, where the, the church, uh, that agent of transformation, showed its appreciations to its young people who have achieved educationally. And I will not want you to go home with anything else apart from what was shared by our guest speaker. What I would say to you that the Central Jamaica Conference is committed in ensuring that no child is left behind. And uh, Lady Keisha, when I get back to the conference office, I will tell them just the way it was stated. That I sat in the front of the Bushy Park Church and uh, I was asked to make up a contribution of $100,000 with a balance of, what's the number, what's the amount? All right, let me, you see, because, because I am accountable to the constituency, I will ask in your favor for $50,000. That's what I would ask for. But just before we have the vote of thanks, I, I want to let you know that the conference has a education fund 
through the WHEEL program. W-H-E-E-L. The W is for welfare. The first, the, the, the H is for health. The first E is for education. The second one is for empowerment. And the L is for local church. The part I want to stress is that we're asking as many members who can afford it to give a whatever you can afford, $500, $1,000. It goes into a pool of fund. Listen to me now. A pool of fund. And... Uh, we are committed to education, so right now we are using up more than 50% of the amount collected for education. Amen? So we want everyone to journey with us. These young people, you have heard what they have achieved. It costs money. Can I hear you say, it costs money. So I want you to know as we bring to a close a well-spent Sabbath, that the Central Jamaica Conference is committed. Dr. Senator, we are committed in ensuring that none of our young people get lost in the, in the maze of life. Join us. Join us as we give all of them a bright and glorious future. God bless you. Pastor Levi Johnson, President of the Central Jamaica Conference of Seventh-day Adventists. Pastor Dr. Clifton Knight and Mrs. Knight. Dr. Knight, Education Director for the Central Jamaica Conference of Seventh-day Adventists. Host Pastor, Pastor Darian Henry. Harris, sorry. Guest Speaker, Senator Dr. Floyd Morris and Mrs. Shelley Ann Morris. Caretaker, for South St. Catherine, Rudyard Kippy Mears, First Elder, David Edwards, the Board of Elders, awardees, specially invited guests, ladies, gentlemen, brothers, sisters, good evening. Educational excellence amidst the odds and without compromise. That was the theme that we used this evening to celebrate our young people. The task falls onto my shoulders to thank all those who participated to make the program this evening a success. Before I begin my vote of thanks though, I would like to start with a quotation which reads, education is the passport to the future for tomorrow belongs to those who prepare for it today. Amen. Planning an event like this is never, ever easy. It takes dedication, commitment, and hard work. To pull it together is no mean feat. So we must recognize and extend special thanks to the planning committee. The members, of course, ably led, by our effervescent, energetic, and erudite Master of Ceremonies, Elder Keisha Sterling, assisted by some of the elders, namely Elder David Edwards, Elder Trisha Cameron Anglin, and Elder Richard Stewart. A special thanks for planning an event like this. However, the program would not be where it is without the endorsement of the wider church community, the administration, and with that in mind, I wish to extend special thanks to the President of the Central Jamaica Conference, who reminded us that true education is not just about earthly work, but about heavenly work as well. 
Another member of that team is the director of the Central Jamaica Conference, the education director, Pastor Dr. Clifton Knight, who had some reminders of his own. He told us that education is one of the vehicles, although it is the most critical vehicle in elevating us from poverty. We got special words also from our caretaker MP, Mr. Rudyard Mears. Special thanks to all. The evening's proceedings, however, came off very smoothly. And for that, I thank the persons who participated directly in this evening's proceedings. Beginning with our host pastor. Again, thank you, Pastor Darian Harris. Our MC, the musicians, both those who provided sound and music, and also to our soloist, Mr. Kiro Gabinon as well, who provided some sage words to his contemporaries. Elder Wallace is the name I was looking for, our soloist. Thank you, Elder Wallace, and thank you, Kiro. Special thanks, special thanks, very special thanks to our guest speaker, Amen. who stridently articulated the three foundation pillars on which your education should be based. One, vision. Two, strong parental support. And three, a firm belief in God. To the roll callers, sisters Velma Hilton and Andrea Reed, a special thank you. To pastors Damian Chambers and Pastor Robert Williams, who are respectively the Director of Communication and Health at the CGAC and the pastor of the Tent City SDA, thank you for sharing this evening with us. In addition to the planners and those who participated, there were some who worked behind the scenes. These people did human work to prepare the venue and the refreshments. Those refreshments we will shortly partake. The persons who provided refreshments are sisters Herman Cameron, Sonia Dharma, Sharon Edwards, Colleen Richards. Thank you. Special thanks to you, the congregants who turned out this evening. And you recognize that I've saved the best for last. Another quotation. True education does not ignore the value of scientific knowledge or literary acquirements. But above information, it values power. Above power, goodness. Above intellectual acquirements, character. The world does not so much need men of great intellect as of noble character. It needs men in whom ability is controlled by steadfast principle. And that comes to us from our favorite author. Oh, we know who that is, right? Our award is you are why we are here this particular evening. You have done well. Continue doing well. And thank you for allowing us to celebrate with you. To share in your pride. And for continuing to fellowship with us as a church. We thank all of you who have turned out. Continue to do well. And as the program says, and it is the scripture which I leave you. It comes from Jeremiah 29, verse 11. For I know the plans I have for you. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. I wish you a good evening. I invite you to stand and I invite Pastor Robert Williams to come and to give us the benediction. After which, listen keenly and carefully to some specific instructions that I've been asked to share with all our members, guests, and so forth. Could we stand everywhere for our closing prayer?
Let us bow our heads together. Heavenly Father, we thank you for such a wonderful evening. We thank you for the awardees. We thank you for all the support. We thank you for the blessing in education. May your blessing continue to be upon us and upon our children in particular. Inspire them to go higher and higher and inspire us to support them every step of the way we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Out in the meditation of our heart, be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. Amen.